friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. You know, I like a good challenging project, and my goodness, we've got one. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, you know, when you first just, you know, quick look at it like that, you think, wow, that's a pretty cool old guitar. And it is. But man, this thing needs a lot of work. You can see right away, uh, binding's missing on the peg head. There's slots here on the edges for binding, but it's missing along the fretboard on both sides. Binding's missing all the way around the top. The top's been removed and re-glued, or I, maybe not. I take that back. It just is, there's just glue there from the original. That's what it is. I thought somebody had dobbed glue on there, but they haven't. It, I think the top has not been removed, but all the binding's gone. It's really messed up, uh, really messed up. I mean, this is a mess uh, in terms of binding and stuff. The uh, tailpiece is broken off right here. It's got a very unique kind of tailpiece. Here's a 1945 Epiphone Triumph, and that's what we're dealing with. Here's a picture of a 1945 Epiphone Triumph try to get it up here close you can see this weird looking tailpiece that it has now in this picture this is backwards than most of them the long side went on the lower on the uh, high strings not the other way around on most pictures that I found on these as a matter of fact eight out of ten of them have the the long uh, side of the tailpiece on the on the treble strings why this one has it the other way, I don't know. I don't know which way to put it on this one because of that, but that one's the closest picture to matching this. The inlays, I have not found another one on the computer that had these exact inlays. Most of them have something similar. The one that I just showed you, the 1945, has got the closest to these inlays. Most of the other inlays are more detailed. Uh, most of the ones I found were from the 30s, also the pictures. This one appears to be from the 40s based on that picture. I haven't traced the serial number or anything. This uh, you know, pick guard is bound, which also matches the one in the 40s. The others in the 30s, I didn't see any with a bound pick guard. So I would guess just from that, this one's from the 40s. Uh, here's the full details on the label. This Epiphone Master Built Instrument. That's what it says. Model Triumph number 141-72. And it's warranted, of course. It says guaranteed against defects. Uh, well, there's a few defects here. I wonder if the warranty's still good. <laughs> Epiphone Incorporated, New York, USA, it says. There's a uh, crack right here that is definitely opened up. Looks like there's a crack right here maybe that has been re-glued at least once, I can tell. The back has a few little cracks and a few chips. It's got the laminated neck, which I kind of like that because that's the way I build all mine generally is with a laminated neck. And it's, as a matter of fact, the lamination is almost exactly the way I do it. It's got uh, maple on both sides with a strip of uh, what looks like walnut down the middle, probably mahogany in this case. I'd say it's mahogany. The pick guard looks to be original. The inlays are still intact. The inlay up here on the peg head is pretty cool. It's, it's still intact. It needs a lot of work. <clears throat> this part of the tail piece came with it. Uh, unfortunately, that's not enough to put six strings on. You can see it only holds three strings. This came with it. So we, all we've got is this and this uh, right now. We're probably not ever going to find an original tailpiece for this. That's probably, I mean, I haven't looked, but I would just assume that's not going to happen. I happen to have a machine shop and have the ability to make a lot of things, and I might be able to, as AVE says, fabric cobble this. Whew. That's to be seen. I don't know about that. I can tell you this project is a big project. That's all I can really tell you for sure. The, all that binding work by itself is just a lot of work. It really is. And making this tailpiece or getting a new tailpiece is a big job. Fixing the cracks. It's hard to estimate the amount of hours that's going to be in this, but, you know, it's going to be quite a few. Trying to, you know, touch up and fix all these marks and finish and stuff you know this is a nice vintage instrument uh, the ones that are up in real good shape you know they're listed for anywhere in the 2000 to 3000 plus range for these kinds of instruments so you know I want to take good care of it and I want to try to make it as good as I possibly can and uh, you know my goal is to make it look like nobody did anything to it but 
that's not likely on something as bad as this is. I'm sure this will probably be a multi-part video series. Uh, you know, you could squeeze everything into one video, sure, but uh, you know, you would have to speed through so much of it that I doubt it would uh, be beneficial to most of you. So we'll probably put it out in multiple parts. We'll just take a laid back approach and just see where the road travels. Hope you enjoy the ride. Well, uh, here's an update to the story on this old instrument. Apparently, this belonged to the great, great, great grandfather. Now, that seems a lot, like a lot of greats for an instrument that's not that old. Regardless, it must have been something in the great grandfather <laughs> range anyway. But uh, he said that his great, uh, great grandfather used to use this uh, in funeral processions. And I thought that's kind of cool. And he said it sat in uh, a garage for 30, 40 years. That's why it's in the shape it's in. He said he thought he had both pieces of this at one time, but he could only find this one piece now. He also said that they, he thinks they make uh, reproductions of this. They call it a frequencer which I've never heard that term before on these, but apparently that's what this tailpiece was called. So he's looking for that to go to send me a link on that. In the meanwhile, I think I'm gonna go ahead, we know we're gonna to have to clean out this binding channel. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning that out. We'll take a look at this up close. I think if you look close, you can see there was a black, white, black binding right here. There's two shelves on this binding and the top shelf had a black, white, black binding. Then there was a bigger shelf here for a big white binding that bound it all. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go around this top shelf and just clean it out because there's no uh, no salvaging this binding. It's completely gone. It's, there's not even, even worth a consideration on that. And um, I'm just going to clean out the slot and get it just as clean as I can get it. It's, it's a shame that some of it's not still there, but it's just not. And, but the whole thing has to be cleaned out in order to put a new binding in there. It's a large uh, shelf for a, for the uh, top purfling binding. Very large shelf. Let's just see how deep it is. Okay, the top binding is going to need to be about 94 thousandths wide. I think they make it in 90 thousandths, so we we'll, may have to get by with that. But yeah, I'm getting 94 thousandths on this top shelf. So we'll have to find a black, white, black binding that will work in this top shelf that's around 94 thousandths thick. But meanwhile, we've got to clean off this top shelf because we can't do anything until we get it cleaned out. I'm just going to go around it with these little tiny chisels and just scrape it clean. And that's all I'm going to do. So to save video, I'm not going to film that whole process because that's all I'm doing. Now I've gotten around here cleaning this out and of course this uh, tailpiece, what's left of it, has to come off because it's just in the way and we can't put the binding back on here with this on there. And we'll have to replace it anyway. So it would be really neat if we could come up with a matching tailpiece for this. I was telling the customer that I have the ability to make a tailpiece if we really have to. I'm pretty sure we could uh, make one that would be very, very close to the original. Original. Can't guarantee that it would be exactly like the original, but it'd be pretty close. But hopefully we can buy a reproduction one, and that would even be better because I'm sure it would be closer than what I could build. I would like to get this end pin out without causing damage. It's plastic. Odds of it coming out, I gotta be honest, are about one in a thousand without damage. I'm going to try prying it out, but I'm gonna try as non-destructively to pry it out as possible. That's hard to do on something like this. I've got a piece of wood here to act as my fulcrum. I'm gonna make sure the screwdriver doesn't touch the finish. I'm gonna try to get under here. You know, we're not gonna hurt this tailpiece thing. I'm not worried about that because it's already broken. It's bad. Can't keep my fulcrum in place. There it is, it popped it out. I'll be darned. I was hoping it would because, you know, this had a, a lip all the way around it and it was pulling all the way around on that pin where if I grabbed it with anything else, it was just gonna break it. So we got it out of there in one piece and that's amazing. We'll hang on to this because we might end up needing it to rebuild the uh, new one if we can't come up with one. Well that's good. I'm glad that came out. Now I will continue on taking all this binding off on that top shelf. We're going to go inside this old uh, Epiphone guitar and I'm going to let you be focused in on the screen here. First thing I'm going to do is show you the label. There's a pretty good picture of it there. You can see Triumph 141-72. Now we're going to go in and look at the 
braces. I, you know, if we're ever going to take this guitar apart, now would be the time to take it apart because all the binding is off the top. So I want to look in here and see what the braces look like and see that they're good and solid. If they're good and solid, of course, we're not going to take it apart. It's very difficult to move this correctly. Difficult to move this without jerking it around, so I apologize for the jerky image. Looks pretty good so far. We're on the base side here. I would like to get all the way up to that end to make sure that that base bar up at that end is still tight. Looks pretty good. I don't see any issues. There's the neck block. Looks pretty good. I don't see any issues with that. There's the treble side bar. I don't see any real problems with the treble side bar on that end. Let's go to the other end. Now we're going to be looking back towards the back of the guitar. We'll start on the bass bar here. We're on the bass side and we're going towards the back. And I want to make sure that the end specifically is still tight. Very difficult to hold it still. But from what I can see there, that looks good and tight. I don't see a problem at all. Now let's go over to the treble side if we can get over there. We'll look at the tail block first, hopefully. There's the tail block. You can see the hole there for the end pin. On the bottom it looks good, but what I can see, let's see if I can see the top of the tail block. Pretty good there too. And now there's the treble side bar. Trying to hold it still. Looks okay. I don't see a problem. I'm going to go in through the hole through the other side to see the other side of the treble bar because it's really difficult to see it from one side. Based on what I'm seeing there, it looks pretty good. So based on what I can tell, the, the uh, tone bars that run through both sides, the bass bar and the treble bar, they both seem to be fine. Uh, the tail blocks, the end blocks, they both look good. So I don't see any internal problems. The next thing I'm going to do is just tap on it to be sure that I don't hear anything loose in there. And to do that, I, I hold it by the neck, take the fleshy part of my finger, and I just start tapping around. Alright, I'm hearing a little rattling going on, but I'm sure that's the tuning keys up at the up at the peg head. I don't hear anything in the body itself. Now there's a there there is a spot here where the top is a little bit loose from the sides right in here. And we'll fix that too, but otherwise the top seems to be solid. I think we're good to go with putting new binding on this and, uh, you know, first of all, gluing this top back down, make sure the top's real secure to the side. But it looks like everything else is fine. I found some black, white, black binding, which appears to be pretty close to what was on there. I've looked uh, on different websites, couldn't find anything that was any better than this. Therefore, I think this is what I'm going to use. I happen to have this in stock already. What's really Really nice about this is that it fits the slot really close. The only negative is I don't have any pieces long enough to do the entire circumference of the guitar. I will have to go, uh, you know, put it in in two pieces. I'll have to put a seam right here at the uh, tail joint, but that'll be covered by the tail piece anyway, so it won't really matter. I am going to. Uh, glue it and tape it in place, I think, and uh, I'm a little concerned about the tape on this old finish, but I don't know how else we can get it done, so we're going to give it a shot and see what happens. The, uh, it, this binding's been curled for a long time and it doesn't want to uncurl, so we're going to heat it up with a heat gun a little bit. and. Uh, I've got some new glue that someone recommended for gluing plastic to wood. This is a canopy glue for model airplanes apparently, or for uh, wooden airplanes that, are, that, that literally fly, and I guess they glue the canopies onto the bodies with this. So uh, it's supposed to be, it says, you know, according to the directions here, it says bonds, uh, canopies, and plastic parts to almost anything. It appears to me that it smells just like tight bond. I believe a PVA glue. Uh, those of you out there that know more about this stuff, it says that it is a uh, vinyl acetate polymer. Well, that sounds like PVA to me, but... I don't claim to be any kind of glue expert. This is the first time I've ever tried this. We're going to give it a shot. What I do like about it is that it cleans up with water, and that's an incredibly good thing on an old finish like this. So that's really good. I like that part the best. This binding looks like it's going to fit exactly without having to trim it at all, so that's really good also. So let's get started and see what happens. 
Well, here goes nothing. We're going to give it a shot and see how well this works. An old battered case, weathered and worn, with the hinge. It's working pretty good. I like this glue, I guess, if it'll hold. You know, I'm assuming it will. Since it says it glues plastic to virtually anything, I would think this should be pretty good stuff. So I sure like it better than, than the other stuff I typically use because it eats up the finish. You have to be so careful with that other stuff. If this works, then this is worth its weight in gold. It's all rusted and the fabric all torn, but still cradle says it takes three hours to set and 24 hours to cure. We'll have to leave this taped up for a while, but I don't want to leave it taped up too long because I'm afraid the tape will adhere to the finish and cause trouble. The inside was one old precious thing. It was Grandpa's old fiddle, oh how. We're around here to the end joint now, and I'm going to clip it off I can see where the seam is here, so I'm just going to clip it off just a hair long of the seam. And then I'm going to you know, lay it in there and take something sharp, maybe a razor blade, maybe something else, and just cut it off, fit where it should. That looks pretty good right there. Actually, i got to put a little more glue in this area. Well, I think this binding is going to be a very good match. It's working out really good so far. It's just about the right dimensions in every direction. It's black, white, black. I'm not 100% sure that the other binding was so disintegrated, I really honestly couldn't tell exactly what it was. But it looked to be a black, white, black. For sure a black and a white. But uh, anyway, it was just too bad to uh, salvage any of it. Even a little tiny piece was just, everything was disintegrated. We're going to start here and work our way back around. Actually, I think I will start back up at the neck. Uh, there's a hole there, and I would prefer to tuck it into that hole. And it'll be harder to do that going in the other direction. Going this way, you can see what I'm talking about. There's a hole right up in here, and I can tuck the binding into that hole. So going this way, that's what I'm going to do. Start here. Tuck the end of the binding up in that hole. That is, assuming the hole's cleaned out enough, and it's not. Clean it out a little bit more here. I gotta go in there now. Yep, and I know we've got plenty of length there, so the only thing I wanna do before I get it too far along is I wanna bend this one bend right here with the heat gun. Just wanna soften it up there where I can get it to bend around this area. I think that's gonna work okay. Got a lot of pieces of tape laying here, ready to go. Gonna go ahead and get the glue put back in there. Sweetly it rains. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melodies. He played it from his heart for my grandpa and me. Wrinkled old hands he held. We're about to meet up back here, so I'm going to cut this off ahead of time, leave it a little long again, just because it's awkward to have all that extra flop in there. And now we're going to finish up the glue, get this thing put to bed. With love, and I can still hear it laying up in. Well, if this stuff sticks like I think it will, I'm in love with this stuff because this is way better than using the acetate based glue which melts the finish and creates all kinds of additional problems. It works pretty good on most plastics but it doesn't work very good on the on the uh, PVC plastic, these new plastic bindings. It doesn't work very good on that and it doesn't even really work that good on the ABS plastic bindings. It, it only worked on those older acetate based, nitrocellul or celluloid based bindings. Work great on that. Okay, getting close enough here now. I'm beginning to think I'm gonna have to cut this off, get it just right, but a little bit more yet, I think, before I do that. I'm turning this back around this way, I feel like I work better this direction. Um, boy, it's gonna be hard to get that cut off to the exact right length. 
what I generally do is cut it off on another piece of wood, but it's kind of hard in this particular case. This binding is very stiff. I've got a little block of wood here. The binding is on there and I'm trimming the end of the binding a little bit at a time to just make sure that it, I don't overshoot it and that it's going to fit. I can take off quite a bit more yet. This looks like this might be about it right here, getting close. No, nope, still got to trim it a little bit more. Very difficult. You want to sneak up on it. You don't want to cut it off too short. It just looks terrible when you cut them off too short. I think I got it. Boy, it's perfect. You can't even see a seam. Just perfect. Absolutely perfect. I'll show you the close-up of it here in a, in a minute when I get her glued up. All right. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. The seam is right at the tip of my pointer there. So there's a seam right there. You can barely, barely, barely see it if you're looking for it. I think it turned out perfect. So I just hope that glue holds good and I hope this tape comes off without marring the finish. I'm really concerned about that because this is an old finish. Well, it's the next morning. We're going to see two things. Number one, how well this glue held this binding in place. And number two, if this tape will come off without destroying the finish. And I'm so worried about that, i got to be honest. Well, that one's pretty clean so far. Doesn't look too bad there. So, just going to take our time and take this off real nice and easy. If I see finish starting to lift, I'm going to try heating the tape with the heat gun lightly. Because I sure don't want to pull off the finish. So far, so good. Well, this will be boring watching me peel tape. So, I'll peel all this off of here and get back to you. Well, I'm going to call that a success on both sides. You can see now that the white, black, white purfling is is in that top groove and it left the bottom groove open for the next row of binding that's got to go around here and the tape didn't do much damage at all to the top I'd be lying if I said it never pulled off anything but it pulled off generally like a little tiny speck of uh, the paint or whatever you want to call that the dark it would pull off a little speck in a place or two wherever there was already damage it was very minor so considering what had to be done I would say it was a good trade-off we will go back and try to touch up all these little spots later so that they go away. The uh, top on this um, is pretty nasty dirty. I'm going to try cleaning that and waxing part of it and see if like when the next row of tape goes on here to see if that helps the tape come off even easier. I did use my heat gun to heat up the tape. The heat gun is variable all the way from almost no heat at all to very hot. So I had it on very low heat about like a hair dryer or less and I warmed up the tape and whenever I did that it left r less residue the tape would leave some tape residue on the on the guitar but not a lot and if you went back and touched it with other tape it would pull that residue off but when you heated it up slightly it left less residue on there for whatever reason so I did start heating it up and that seemed to help we're up against another issue the binding around this top the slot when you measure it, it measures, and I've measured it in several places, it measures 125 thousandths or even more in places. Like right here, it's measuring 100 and, well, that's 125 too. Uh, I thought I just measured it more than that a minute ago. 125 thousandths. So that's an eighth of an inch thick bind. That's really thick. So we're going to have to come up with something. I don't have any binding that kind of thickness. So we'll have to laminate something, look around and see what we can obtain. But uh, that is really a wide binding. You know, hundred thousandths is a wide binding. This this purfling was over a hundred thousandths. It was about a hundred and five thousandths, if I remember right, something like that. Hundred and ten thousandths, I can't remember. But anyway, so so that purfling was really wide, but yet now the binding around the outside is even wider. So it's crazy how thick the bindings are on this. So we'll have to come up with something on that. We'll we'll drop back five and punt. Just to give you some idea of what what I'm facing here. Um, I have some binding in stock that I use on my mandolins. This is an ivoroid on the outside, if you will, then a uh, black and then a white on the inside. This binding is 96 thousandths is what I'm measuring. This slot, keep in mind, is 120 thousandths. So when you put it in here, there is a little tiny lip here and uh, you know that's not really acceptable so I don't want that lip plus this ivoroid grain if you will if you're looking at the grain of, of this binding it's got a grain to it and the bottom binding doesn't have the grain to it it's a similar color but not the same of course the bottom one is aged 
in places the bottom one is white you can see and then it's yellowed in other places it's really hard to match this this particular binding is close but it's just not going to work um, it gets a little bit busy on top even i think because you've got the uh, black white black zoom in here to see what that looks like you've got the black white black already then you put this on there with the white black white and it's starting to get a little bit busy in my opinion I, it's just a little bit too much the next option i have which is not going to work either i don't think is i've got this thick black and then i've got this thick white that might actually look better in terms of the black white the black's way too thick that would have to be thin way down and that's the only thing i have in stock at the moment so i think what we're doing is we're going on the internet and looking for what we can find to see to see if we can find something that's going to make this look good because i don't think i have anything in stock that's going to suit me if it doesn't suit me i know it's not going to suit the customer as i'm looking for binding most all of it's sold in quarter inch heights and all of this is higher than that this is well it's ten thousands higher than that so it's two hundred and sixty thousands two hundred and seventy thousands in places so it's 265 so i'd really like to have something taller i may have to put another binding on the bottom laminate another binding on the bottom just to fill that in another ten thousandths or something it's just not simple a very very complicated binding situation most of the ones when i looked these up online there was a lot of thickness in the white so i'm looking for a fairly thick white binding with maybe another thin black or something i don't know that's going to make the black here double because there's already a black you know black white black it's just not an easy decision and like i said it's it's they're only a quarter inch high so they're really not going to reach up to the height of this other binding and and this binding feels totally flush with the surface the one that i put in there you can't really feel it so it's not sticking up at all it's just about right if anything in a place or two it might even be a hair low i got to have something that tall to make it work it just gets come more complicated when i'm checking the binding for this uh, fretboard around here you know up here it measures 30 thousandths thick on the nose so you think well 30 thousandths binding that's pretty standard you come up here and you check it and it needs a 55 thousandths thick binding so the binding slot is not the same all the way up and down yeah there's 55 thousand so it gets much thicker through here and then it gets thinner and thinner down through here so wow you got to be careful ordering that stuff because otherwise I mean, if I ordered it, then this would all be way too thin. So I need to get a thicker binding, actually. So I need at least a 50 thousandths thick binding for that. And the height, hopefully it doesn't vary as much. But it ought to be fairly standard, I would think. The height is not that high. 180 thousandths, looks like. 180 thousandths. Very complicated. After several days on the shelf, because I just couldn't get to it, we're back to this Epiphone Triumph guitar. I found in my stock binding, I found these white pieces of binding, which is basically what it came out with. Of course, they're very bright white. You know, that doesn't look good right now because everything else is toned down. So we might be able to tone these down later. We'll see about that. I'm not too worried about the color as much as I am, just the fit and all that. And this is the perfect fit, except that nothing fits. In other words, it's too thick this way, it's too thick, and it's too tall. You know, other than that, it's perfect. So I'm going to have to thin it down some. Uh, I'm just trying to decide how thick I want it. And probably the best way to figure that out is with my calipers. So I have the caliper depth gauge here, and I'm going to try to find the thickest, widest part of this. And you push it in till it touches. That says 46 thousandths. I always do it two or three times or a couple of times in each location because you can never be sure that you just did it perfectly. That says 54 thousandths. So there's a big variance there. Let me try it again. 46. Wow, that's weird. 52. Right around 50. Okay, so that, that's up in the, I think that's about the thickest place. Down here it's much thinner, I think. Yeah, it's only like in the 30s down here. So I mainly have to cut it to the thickest place. It's only in the 30s. So up here is where it's the thickest. So because of the variance there, I think I'll try to go to 55 thousandths or so to give myself a little bit of extra. Let's check on the other side and see what we're getting over here. Getting right around 50 there also. And that may be the thickest place. I don't know. A little less than 50. So I think if I just call it 55 thousandths. So I'm going to take these all these pieces to my thickness sander and we're going to try to take them down to about 55 thousandths of an inch. Heaven above.
Well, that actually scared me a little bit because when I started pushing it through there, I could tell it was cutting more than I was expecting. But it just worked out where it cut it about 60,000, so it was just a little bit big. And so I didn't even adjust it. I just ran it back through a couple more times. Those spring passes will take off a thousandth of an inch. And so we're really close to about uh, 55 thousandths now, which is plenty good. So we're going to call that good. Well, if the footage in the other room turns out, you'll see that we did run this through the thickness sander and it did cut it down to the, about the right thickness. It's still a little bit thick for this application, but we'll just smooth it down after we get it glued in there. But you can see probably in the camera that it's sticking up tall of this by quite a bit. So I'm now going to try to figure out how to cut this off. I've got a fine tooth band saw and I may run this through there and cut some of the top the height off of this because that would be a lot to shave off later so I think that's what we're gonna do I'm just gonna use rough measurements here and just take a pencil and go across the top of the fret because I don't want it to be below these frets just giving me some ideas in a few different places and then I'm just gonna measure that and set my bandsaw to that and so that works out to about 215 thousandths of an inch roughly maybe a little more about 225 we're gonna call it so less than a quarter of an inch so I'm gonna set the bandsaw at that and then we're gonna cut these rip these thinner The most honest man. I think we've got this just about ready to install. I'm checking uh, everything to fit, and uh, now I'm going to uh, mark the length here. But the length I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to 45 this, I hope. I'll cut it a little bit long with a chisel, and then I'll sneak up on it, 45ing it. Most people would just cut them off square and call it good, but I like to 45 them and make them fit like a picture frame. I just think it looks better. It's, it's a very small joint. Not too many people will ever see it. When you get it close, the best way i found is to file it the rest of the way rather than trying to cut it. Then you can sneak right up on it. We'll have to do the same thing to the other little piece here and we'll see if those match up. I want to make sure they match up before I get this in place. That looks like that matches up pretty well. It's about as good as it's going to get, I believe, so we'll call that good. I'm going to try that new glue again, and uh, I liked how it worked on this, so we're going to try it again on the fretboard and see how it works on the, on the fretboard. Okay, we're all set to go. Uh, we'll apply the glue to the guitar first, and the easiest way in this case is just to turn it up like this and set the glue right on there. I did scrape this uh, joint with our single edge razor blade off camera so that I made sure it's fairly clean and no old glue in there. The other thing you have to watch is now that you put the bevel on the end of the of this that you turn the bevel the right direction otherwise you get it glued in there and you're totally screwed up and so we don't want to do that off camera here I've got a little bowl of warm water that I'm going to use to help clean up this glue squeeze out I'm still a little bit of a learning process with this new glue um, I'm totally used to a different kind of glue uh, but I really like what I'm seeing out of this stuff so far just really enjoy using this compared to the other glue especially for these PVC binding because they didn't melt very well anyway with the other glue now we'll take a little tape and start up the fretboard I'm trying to push the binding in there as tight as I can as I apply the tape the one advantage that the other glue does have is that it does melt the plastic so like when you get to a corner like this corner up here you know even if the joints not perfect they'll melt together well this you're gonna have to cut a little more perfect joint even though I tried to cut them perfect anyway so it's not that big of a disadvantage but but that was an advantage that it did you know work with an imperfect joint the other glue as I mentioned it doesn't melt the PVC as well as it melted the other plastics so it's a point counterpoint that I ever have seen I'm going to have to turn it where I can see this end better and get my other 45 up here and compare it now and make sure that it's a good 45. Could be a little bit better. Let's see where it might need a little bit of filing. And I'll put, up my, put on my close-up specs. Looks really pretty good. Couldn't be much better than that. So now I will mark the other side 
and the pencil is not quite sharp enough for the fine mark like that. I want the pencil just as sharp as I can get it, and that would be the inside of the 45. So if the 45 goes away from that mark, I'll cut it long first. Matter of fact, I'll just cut it a little long and just file it because filing it is the safest way to go. That should do it pretty good. This uh, fretboard has something unique. It's got a, looks like it has a truss rod in it underneath there if you can see it and there's a cutout. So because of that and just as I'm just seeing that again, I got to thinking maybe I shouldn't put this end piece on yet. I think I'll wait and put it on last. Go ahead and put this other piece on, make it fit first. So first thing I'm going to do is clean out this groove with a single edge razor blade. I'm scratching against the fretboard and in the, down in the groove also. Quite a bit of stuff comes out of there actually and of course some of it's just the wood itself just curling off but at least you get a nice straight clean corner and edge. And now just making sure I get the right side down. I want that side down and now I got to square up to this nut. It looks pretty good and I'm going to make it just a little better. We got her in place so now I'll mark this end for the 45. I want to make sure that it doesn't move on me when I mark this. Okay, Cut it off a little bit long and then file it back. Once again most of these joints are not 45 they're just squared off but it's just that little extra that makes them look better I think when they're 45. Okay let's Get the glue put to it. In a situation like this, it's also very easy to apply an even amount of glue with this kind of glue, which I like a lot. Gotta make sure I turn my 45 the right direction. There is a little bit of tackiness to this glue, so it does kind of hold the piece there, only if the piece is, you know, in that shape. If, it, if this was curved or something, I don't think it would be enough tacky in this glue to hold anything. Okay, we got her situated and we'll start putting the tape on it. There can be a, a big variance in your results on how you put this tape on too. You want to make sure that the tape is pulling everything tighter together and not pulling it apart. Trust me, because you can do that if you don't get it just right. So I'm starting below it, which isn't necessarily the best because you want to pull it down, but I'm I'm pushing down on it and pulling down pushing down on the tape too to hold it down. But I'm also trying to pull it in to this to the neck too. So there's a couple of directions that we're working on here. A guy could start at the top, I suppose, and maybe it would even be better. But uh, it just depends on the what you're doing. In this particular case, it doesn't make too much difference, but going from the top down feels better right now, so I'm going to go ahead and finish it that way. His time on, this old earth was most on this part here, because there's just a very short amount of area to glue from the bottom, I have to almost start on the bottom or I'll, it won't work out very well. Okay, the hard part's done there on the... we can just take our time now and try to fit up this back piece a little bit better. In fact, I think I'll go ahead and put another little piece of tape right there on the very end. Keep that pulled in tight. And now we'll see how well this fits. It's a little bit long, so we're going to have to cut a little bit off of it first. It doesn't take much at this stage. A little bit more. That's pretty dang close. Boy, I mean just a file stroke or two is all it's going to take now. That's right on the money there. Okay, now I want to see if I need to cut out a slot there and where I need to cut it for this slot that's in there. All right, so it's kind of a, it's just a rectangular slot. So I'm going to put this in my little vise and just file out a little tiny rectangular slot. Put this in fairly square and to about the depth I want to file to. I believe that'll do. I think that'll work. It doesn't have to be all the way out. It's just got to give some clearance there. And that looks pretty good. So let's get the glue on the end here. I'm going to start on the 45s, get a little glue there. It'll be a little difficult to tape that because there's nothing really there to tape to on the bottom side. Just trying to hope it gets a little tacky there. Like I said, this has got a little bit of tackiness to it, but not very much. And uh, so it's not going to hold real good by itself. Let's see if the tape will hold it or make it worse. I'm not sure. Hoping I can get the tape underneath it and maybe I can get some 
something under there to press the tape up under the fretboard, maybe. I don't know if it'll do that or not. And the answer is it doesn't want to. It's not working real good. Try coming around here with my tape around the corner. And I think that might actually give me a little bit of an advantage there. I think that's going to hold that. Maybe I'll do that before I do the other one. And then I'll try to get one under there too if it'll go. Well, we'll just have to wait and see how that turned out. I think it's going to be okay. I think we're fine. If we have to redo that little end piece there, that shouldn't be any great loss, but I think it's okay. Got a little thicker binding for up here because these slots are a little wider. I'm just going to mark about the depth there and see if it's about the same on the other side. Looks to be. And then we're going to try to cut these down to the proper thickness too. Call it about 50 thousandths tall there. And so we'll go rip all these down to the right thickness or right height I should say. Anyway, we've got our four pieces cut to about 150 thousandths of an inch, and now we're ready to put those in the peg head. This heat gun is variable temperature. You can go from literally cold to very, very hot. I have it set on about a low medium heat right now. I'm going to see if it's warm enough to uh, you know, melt the plastic and make it conform to this curve in the peg head. You just want to Warm it up so it softens, but you don't want to get it where it melts. It's not very hot. So I'll probably have to heat it up a little more because I putting it on my thumb there. It's, I mean, it's very warm, but it's not crazy hot. It's about like a hair dryer right there. In fact, I got criticized in video because they said you shouldn't use a heat gun on a guitar. You should use a hair dryer. It's not so hot. Well, I can hold that one on my hand. Do you think that was too hot? It's funny how people think they know everything there is to know about everything on a video and they're not here to see what's going on. That did a pretty good job. It's not completely melted enough. Like I said, this glue doesn't have much tack to it, so you, you want to make sure the part fits pretty darn good before you start gluing it. I'm also having to cut a bevel on the back side of this. As you can see, it's not square, and that makes it match the nut here. And I'm going to put my close-up glasses on to give it a final inspection, but I believe it's pretty tight. Okay, so now, you know, a lot of joints are just butt joints. Like, that's the way they did the peg head up here at the end. They just ran it right by. And I don't like that, but I'm going to have to do that. Otherwise, I'll have to replace this piece too. So I'm going to have to run this piece right by and just cut it off. But here, I have the option of, you know, uh, running the piece by or 45 in it. And it's, it's a compound 45 in this case. But I generally like to 45 them. So even though it's a compound 45, I'm going to give it a shot. And, you know, if I waste a piece, well, we'll just have to do it again. And what I always do is, as you've seen many times, is I cut them off quite a bit long. It gives you the chance to sneak up on it a little bit so that you can kind of see, you know, are you doing the right thing to make it better? And I'm glad I cut it off long because it isn't very too, too much long, I can tell you. That looks pretty good right there. I think I'll have to stop right there and hope that the next piece will work on that. So now I'm going to try to cut the, the joint to match up to that. And there's a slight curve, and this is curving the wrong way, so I'm gonna have to heat this up and curve it a little bit too. Like I said, I can hold it right there on my hand. So it's not crazy hot, it's pretty hot. It's about hot as a real hot hair dryer. Let's see if that's warm enough to get it to conform. Doesn't need much of a bend the other way, but I but it, this plastic's wanting to bend the wrong way, so I need to overcompensate a little bit. Not too bad. Could set the dryer a little bit hotter and it would help. It's just not quite getting hot enough, I don't think. Okay, so now let me see how I've got to make this one cut to make it match. Take some off the bottom, and at this point, well, I can still use the chisel, but it might be better just to go to a file. Try that first. I think that's going to be pretty darn close. Close, but not perfect. It's real close, though. Very, very, very close. And now I just can't find my file. That's all. That's my only problem. Oh, well, I got plenty of files. We'll try another one here. Double check it again to see just where I need to file it. Pretty close. Doesn't take too much when you get close. I think we can call that good enough. And then... What we have to do then is hold it in real tight and then I just need to mark it and cut it off to the length of the other piece here. Because we're not 45 and down here because the other piece is not 45. And once again, I'll cut it off just ever so slightly long and work it down afterwards. 
not very long, it's just a little long. Okay, I think we're in good enough shape that we can glue those two parts in. Just gonna clean the groove one more time though. I don't think I cleaned this one maybe, I'm not sure. And yeah, we'll just do one piece at a time. I believe we got her there. And now we'll be sure to get the ends of the 45 glued. To me. He lived on Curran River at the mouth. Okay, I believe we're good on that side. Now we just have the other side to do. I'm going to clean up these little pieces of binding because after sawing them, there, there's little jagged edges getting rid of the corners, some of the jaggedness. And I just make sure that I turn the cut side up so that it'll be scraped off later and smooth. Once again, this is turned the wrong way. Well, this one's not. This one will be okay. But uh, the curve on it I'm talking about. Now I have to cut a angle on this to match. Well, I take it back. Yeah, if I turn it this way, it's cut right. Yeah, I just have to... Turn it the right way. Okay, so now I'm going to cut a steep angle back under this to see if it'll match up with the fretboard. It's a little bit too steep, but not much. That's real good there. Okay, I'm gonna clean this slot. Very good. I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more just to, I'm gonna turn the heat up on this just a little bit more because it's not quite hot enough. And I'm going to bend this to fit that bit curve better. And once again, I have to cut a compound angle in this. There, it's getting pretty close. Call that close enough for now till we get the other piece matched up and see how it fits. And I'll cut that totally backwards, which I thought I was, but I always wouldn't understand how. But I did. Hey, okay, that's not too bad. It just doesn't match up real good yet. A little bit of filing and I think it will. Looks pretty darn good. Can't be much better than that, I don't think. Okay, so now we just gotta cut it off to the right length. And once again, I'll cut it off just a little proud of that, just so it has a little bit of fudge factor there that we can scrape off later if we need to. Now let's get her glued up and taped on. And we're done with the binding on the neck and peg head. We'll just let that set overnight, 24 hours. It probably doesn't need to set that long, but I like to give it that long. 